Well, welcome to today's field study video. I'm conscious that we are, we haven't done anything in a while, uh, and that's down to the hard drive going down and a couple of projects I had on the go. I've finished, um, the files have been corrupted. And I do apologize for the quality of today's video in as well. It's done on the uh, the four bile moan in rather bad weather over a couple of days uh, as the weather has sort of stopped me working. So we're on the top of heart side near Alston Moor, Heartside Cafe there, or where the cafe was. The Alston to Heartside Road here. And I want you to have a look at some of these old roads there. We've got the old Heartside Road coming down there. We're going to be following part of that. This area here is what's colloquially known as Jailhouse Corner. It's the building on the corner. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we've got the old road coming down here. You can still follow it. Four before I still use it which then rejoins the, the modern day road up here. Uh, this is the old Roman Maiden Way. Now, uh, the first part of it uses a shooting road, which went across the fell and then up towards Whitley Castle. So what bit are we going to be concentrating on? Well, for a start, we're going to look at this area on the side of the Heart Side Road, and we're looking at a line of old drifts that you can see from Jailhouse Corner, Rogill, back towards Alston. There's no history that I've ever found about them. Um, they're on the first Ordnance Survey map, and an odd one is on Greenwood's map of 1820. But when you look on the inspector's reports, they're not there. So if they're on the, the first Ordnance sheet, 1865, as mine, which means they're kind of working, you would expect them to be there on the uh, inspector's reports, but they're not. Now, the next question is, whose land are they on? We've found um, in the archive an old estate plan pertaining to where a heartside colliery is, but it doesn't show land at this elevation, but it gives us an idea that it could be owned by certain owners. Now, as we look along the road, that's the um, the road down from Jailhouse Corner on, on Rogue Hill. Coming along the outside road, we can see there is a road in, there also is a road in and there's another road in here and this is actually a stone cabin that's been built um, and there's another gate out with a gate post up here and the drifts that we're concentrating on are all along this edge they don't show up very well sadly on uh, google earth now that's the first first bit we're going to concentrate on then we're going to come down the hill a little bit to some drifts i didn't know existed on a lower elevation down here quite a big heap actually that's not it that's too low down it's around about here it's hard to pick out this is where you miss lidar um again it's on a lower elevation but it's uh, quite a big heap it's not there actually looking back because that's the cabin um, and i was up here looking at these drifts for a start and then i came down to this area there's actually a, a big telegraph pole stuck in the heap I wish we had LiDAR coming down this far. And then we go back up. Back up there. There's Jailhouse Corner again and Rogill. Rogill Colliery actually is the, round about there. And the only map that it's shown on is the map that shows the actual layout of the turnpike. So that's going to be around about 1823 at least, isn't it? And it shows Rogill as a working colliery. Now this road, as we can see, is the old Heartside Road. Joining on to that. But below, you can just pick out this old road here. And this is from a line of coal drifts. The, the, and the most sort of southerly of the drifts is here. And I'm wondering if this is actually a boundary wall of land. We've got the land ownership for here and a land ownership further down. But I can't for, for sure say which this land ownership is. But anyway, there's a drift going under that boundary wall there. There's no coal workings on this side. It doesn't appear to be. But there are lead workings and there's obvious roads going down into the lead workings and there's a big lead drift there so this bottom road there's another cabin there a two-room cabin and sadly my video in didn't work there but we've got some good photographs and there's drifts equally spaced all along this hillside back to the clough all the drifts look to be single track but they are stone arched so they've they've been 
they've been built to last. How far they go, I don't know. We know very little about them. Anyway, so this is the area, uh, and anybody wanting to build on, on, on this is more than welcome to, please. If you come across anything in any archives that may be pertaining to leases, um, please let us know. We know that Hartside Colliery worked for at least 200 years, probably more so, and was used principally not just for lime burning, but also for, uh, for supplying coal to Walsham Moor, and Hartside Colliery is up here, and you've got a boundary, the boundary wall, so the workings this side are nothing to do with the Hartside Colliery. Believe it or not, it's the Duke of Portland <laughs> um, who, who owns this lot, so it'd be great to get into that archive. So we can have a quick shifty on this estate plan that's just turned up, um, but basically shows where Hartside Colliery is. Here's the boundary wall at the top, there we've got Hartside House, and it shows this land certainly between the boundary wall and the Olsen Road, which isn't shown, um, belongs to the Duke of Portland, Manor of Gamblesby. To the other side of him, on the Edenall side, we've got the Manor of Haskew, and that's Sir Philip Musgrave Bart, and he's from uh, Edenhall. And lower down, there you've got the Manor of Glassenby, Sir Philip Musgrave as well. So... To find out some leases, we may have to try and uh, get into the um, the Duke of Portland's um, archive. Or maybe when we get to the, the other side of the road, it may even be uh, Philip Musgrave from Eden Hall. But anyway, at least this plan has, has given us a little bit of clarification and a little bit of a view of uh, the workings of Hartside Colliery as well. We're on the first edition of the Ordnance Survey map, which up here is 1865 thereabouts. It's uh, the outside cross where the cafe was, and uh, the new Turnpike Road, and there we've got the old road coming down here, across Rogal Clough, and then down towards, and back up to the uh, the Turnpike there. There's the, uh, the Maiden Way. Today there's a, a road that joins these two, comes off and then back up to there. So what area are we interested in? Well, our first area that we actually get to are these coal mines here. As it shows them on the first ordnance map, it looks actually as though they're working because it says coal mines. There's no sign of the drift that's further down the fell from here, which we walk down to. Again, there's a couple of small buildings here. but th That's all it shows. But we will find more drifts as we look. Actually, it does show a couple more of the drifts further up. Now, this one that we can see here it looks to be quite exten extensive. It shows, a, again, a little cabin there. It doesn't show... Or is that the cabin? Yeah, um, maybe that's the cabin that we, we can see the remains of. Because one of these drifts is really extensive. Sadly, th this doesn't show quite a, a large cutting that's here a, a, a large um, clough but one of these drifts here is quite extensive and in fact i'll say it's still open you can see where the drift portal was and you can actually see into it but it's boarded off uh, and actually just in by it, it's all fallen up with shale and what it's doing it, it's draining the field behind so it's of no danger whatsoever but it looks to be quite extensive and we will see where there is a stone cabin in the field then we come up to a uh, jailhouse corner as you can see it's not on the 1865 map the um the pit row gill is not on the 1865 map what is there is part of the old road down here that you can follow the old outside road and then we come down to these coal drifts which look to be accessed down there don't they that looks to be the access point to them there's our well there's one cabin um, I th that could possibly be the one where my camera gave out. And there's another cabin there. Levels all across. It doesn't show all the levels. And in fact, we come across, there's a level there as well. And there's other levels and drifts in um, and possibly shafts coming down to this area. And a road that comes across the clough and back up onto the older outside road here. So that's the area we're going, and that's what you can see on the um, the Ordnance Survey sheet. Let's see if we can find much on Greenwood's map. Greenwood doesn't show us a lot, but we can see there's a new turnpike, there's the old outside road coming up, um, and across, that's Roe Gill. 
And we can see there, look, a road that's not cer certainly isn't shown on the first uh, OS map. And he puts a coal pit. Now, where exactly is that coal pit? There's outside house. This is the boundary where the outside colliery is. Let, let's say it's around about there. So he's not showing Rogill. Uh, he's not showing Rogill coal pit, or or is he? When, when we compare it later on with the um, with the turnpike plan. Now, not the best photograph. I just took it on the phone, and th this can be seen actually in the uh, the Hub Museum. I think Simon Danby did all the photographing for this, and it actually shows Rogill coal pits there. This is Jailhouse Corner. So it shows a collection of, of, of pits at that side of the road. But there, it's out of focus, sorry. It says level mouth. Now, does that say hut? Uh, I can't say for sure, but there you've got Rogel Colliery on this particular plan of the um, the new turnpike. That's interesting as well. Gamekeeper's house on the top. That's the old outside road coming across there. Um, and then it used to go up to our outside house up there as well. So at least Rogill pits do appear as working there around about the 1820s. Um, but on, as we've seen on the 1865 map, there's no building there. What is known as Jailhouse Corner doesn't exist. So it doesn't look like it's anything to do with Rogill coal pits. Unless it is something to do with the pits later on. Um, but most likely it's looking like it's to do with the shooting lodge. Now the... Uh, the geological survey is extremely busy and it's hard to make out, but this is the bend in the road where the cafe is. There's the hairpin below the cafe. Um, now, this looks to be the boundary wall where we came across. It shows a, a track going down there, which you can see on the first map. So which is Jailhouse Corner? That looks to be Jailhouse Corner there, right on a fault. Now, I could be wrong. I could be reading this map wrong, but that does look like the old outside road going below doesn't it on top of the great limestone so jailhouse corner is here and then we've got the rogill drift then going in so the rogill drift does look like it's going into the little limestone rather than going into the uh, the four fathom coal so we can see these drifts below that we follow all along the fell at the bottom and they're obviously into the four fathom coal it looks like there's a big fault running up uh, the side of Rogue Hill. so these drifts going down the heart side road again are into the little limestone coal and as we move on down there's a drift above the road that I've missed which comes in after this fault here or is that trying to get in there so these again then they're into the the little limestone coal on the four fathom as i said this drift down the bottom must be into the four fathom coal as well so that gives you your geography of where we are i did say when i was in um Rogill itself i would try to work out some of the strata <laughs> but it, i think i need a bit of a bigger bigger scale map to do that but it's very interesting as you can see and if you want to get the gs map out yourself and have a good look and a good route that'll keep you busy for quite a few hours won't it okay again as i said let's get back on the ground see the drift going in there for years i've drove past nearly every day and thought i think there's a way in there and i've gone and checked it today and it isn't but these heaps here off the olsen road and i have got permission to come on i did ask the landowner a very little very little is known about them some of them appear on the first os map there's no nothing about leases so you've got a, another heap there near where the telegraph pole sticking up they do show up on greenwood's map some of them do show up on green greenwood's map uh, but they've obviously been I, don't know, I wouldn't say extensive wouldn't like to say how far in the air but i mean the heap on this one's pretty um pretty extensive And I did notice on the way up what appeared to be a water-filled shaft as well, just around that area where. And this looks to be the remains of the drift all fell in. Now it's who owned the land in the past. I don't think it's part of Alston Moor. Certainly further up, when I was looking into the Alston, uh, sorry, the outside colliery, uh, this was the Duke, well, the Duke of Portland's land was on this side of the fell, up to the boundary wall. But I don't know how far down this way it comes of the Duke of Portland's land. 
is it the manner of glass and beer gambles be so it's finding records isn't it i've got a real bit of solid ground here there's a drift there there's a heap and this seems to be a real bit of solid ground have they had a cabin here um oh another infrastructure beside a cabin or is this possibly part of the road in possibly part of the track in well look at the heap down there so this is either our it's either a, an old shaft which would be very extremely near the crop edge or it's been a sinkhole but it seems to have the built-up area around it denoting it's been a shaft it looks to have the the, uh, the thing around the top if you know what i mean and a bit of uh raised ground just there too yeah, a bit of raised ground here here's a bit of a shaft there and looking back into the sun we've got the heaps there and a heap further up like there's a fault between the two would have been a great day to be up cross fell today and get back up there right like i said the heap at the bottom so this is the heap at the bottom you see the definite drift there and it is a sizable heap they made it a good uh, place to put a telegraph pole the quarry there, quite a fire member out of some large sinkholes, and the wall behind actually is the old road that comes down from Row Gill. Follow the wall down, it comes from Row Gill down and joins um, the turnpike. Well, what became the turnpike, so that's part of the old outside road coming down here. Ah, that's the line of the drift, and it looks like. Um, Foxes or something are in, or rabbits, whichever. Right, into the drift there, and we see the heaps above. So I went to the four fathom down here, and that's the limestone up there, or is there quite a fault between the two? Now there's no obvious road away. Bend up into the drift there. There doesn't seem to be any obvious track away down to get us on the road down there, but goodness me, 200 years at least, isn't it? And it's a bit of a bog. And this is the, the top one. You can see the line of the collapsed drift. This is one I thought might have been open on the other side of the road. I've passed it for a couple of years, thought I must look. You can see where the line of the drifts come in and the bit pit heap there. And just in this gully across the road, it looked like there was a way in, but it's not, it's just, it's just a gully. So that's a few of the pits on the heart side road. And we get further up, and obviously the, the prevalent, these are all the way up to Row Gill, all the way along here. Uh, and yet, like I said, I found no records of them. The mines inspector's report has no record of them, even though they're on the first map as mine, which looks like they're working. So, yeah, so are the records somewhere within the Duke of Portland's records? And he had quite extensive uh, mining interests up in here, apparently. And that's what I say, because that'd be a little shaft. It's a bit of a boggy place to put a shaft, but the other one uh, I kind of filmed a minute ago, you can just see that bit of raised ground, so that's there. There's our second heap. There's our first one next to the telegraph pole. The telegraph pole's in it next to the road. Then the next level and then we're right down where that telegraph pole is for that bottom heap um, we've got a few more little heaps just further down a nice little pin fold up there and all you never know one day some records might turn up i did mention a road you can definitely follow a bit of a track off that heap and it looks like this could be it coming up here you know i said there was some hard ground had there been a cabin well it was a, a track that seems there's the other shaft there there's this either fallen in bit or a shaft and you've got this hard hard bit there that there's definitely a track going down to the serving these here but no way i could find for the one at the bottom what that was served with and this is what everybody calls jailhouse corner although it's probably not a jailhouse at all it's possibly something to do with shooting um it could be to do with a pit but who knows, because this is where Rogill Colliery was, and Rogill 
Collery does appear on the um, the map when the um, turnpike was built and it, the drift is just down in there um, all up here in this all the Duke of Portland's land and that there were drifts in and shafts uh, into the coal up there the, the other side of the boundary to Heartside Colliery. And there is a big drift up there, which I did think was part of Heartside until uh, obviously I saw the boundary, the boundary map in the archive. And this is obviously the old, the old road, as I pointed out, with the drifts further down that come onto it. And the field down here, sorry about the light, I'm not going to wander down there today, but there's at least three heaps and remains of old cabins and drifts in that field, so they're possibly down into the uh, Four Fathom. I'm sure that Rogill was into the Four Fathom as well. Much of it obviously now being destroyed, certainly the old pit heap. You can see the line of the drift, the collapsed drift there. There's what looks to be a track leaving the site there. I have followed that before up onto the hill. The site now is much destroyed really. And the heap's half washed away with the gill. And these are the drifts just a bit further down. And there's an old cabin further up. We'll have a wander back up to that. You see it's been quite substantial, it's a big heap and that's the drift going in there to get under the road. Now we come off the road there, the cabin's just in this field here. You see the uh, some hard standing here, some consolidated ground to the cabin. And then we've got this culvert coming under the road again. So that hard standing is not leading to there is it, unless there's a that's the remains of a track going across the culvert, across the uh, clough rather. It possibly has been and it's been washed away. side of the cabin. Now has that been a drift in? You see that little gully there? Right at the side of the clough. And what certainly drags the attention is that old gate post as well. Just one. Have a closer look, see what's on it. Simon shouting at me now for not having a dead cat, but this looks like the old road that comes down on this side of Heartside here uh, and possibly goes into where the Rogill um, workings were. It's a definite clear platform anyway, and now I'm making my way down to these drifts that's a bit further down. It's daft, it? I'm going to try and do them in order, sorry about the wind. Just come from a drift there, you can see up to where the van is. Rogill or Jailhouse Corner and you can see a definite track running along here. I'm going to go to the furthest drift nearest the cafe if you know what I mean and kind of come back in chronological order. This wall appears to be the boundary. Whether it is actual land boundary I don't know but there's little coal mine. There doesn't seem to be any coal mining activity in that field although we have found some roads in there coming off the heart side road one down there and one that way. Sorry I'm not sure about filming that isn't it? Uh, and some mineral mining activity there with that heap but seems to be devoid of the coal and this is where the coal pits seem to start 
That'll take you to the first drift. Now, see plain as day, the line of the drift. There's a possible boundary wall there. All collapse and a bit of a heap. But it's the next one along that's more interesting because there's the remains of uh, at least a two room cabin there. And from what I saw last time, most of these drifts were stone arched. You could see more stone arch, and there's the track bed, the, the road running away to the next drift along. So they are quite substantial. Remains of the cabin. Where the drifts have been here. See, it's all fallen in. There's no cover on it. Another drift end there. Sorry about the sun. There's a road coming down. You can't get into it, but you can see where the animals have been this side of the fall coming towards the exit. And it's just a single stone arch drift. You should be able to actually see the top of the stonework. Little of any infrastructure remaining, there's some mounds. Mounds a bit lower down and again the continuation of the lane across. You can see the quite, this is the next one down, the quite evenly spaced down the hill across the fell side, which kind of has its own suggestion in itself that each drift isn't that extensive. What did they use for underground transport and haulage? Did they just keep coming in and going until the water hit them? I don't know. They were good enough, or looked at long enough ventures to put stone arches up. And again, it's kind of intriguing to wonder what all the different mounds were about. Now, this is one where you can actually see where the stone arching is, and it's collapsed. See, they're not very, I know that's the top of the arching, but the drift itself isn't particularly that wide. I've been about its width there to there. I think we've got quite a deep collapse. I'm saying this is collapse rather than a shaft for one reason, really. You can see the remains of a drift coming under the fence and it looks like there's been a building there as well. There's some rubble. see on the geological survey what strata we're in down here but you can see there's uh, one or two nice little bits of iron leaching out there And this is obviously the, the road back out of this area, back onto the bottom of the old outside road. And limestone quarries there. And this road, as you know, comes right back up onto the, the new turnpike. <laughs> new turnpike, 200 years later. Uh, near where the maiden way crosses over. But this is the old road. This will take us back up to the top of Rogue Hill. Kind of had four seasons not in one day, in several days. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed that bit of a whistle stop tour and the, the drifts just off outside here. There's no revelations of history to make, I'm afraid. Somebody might come across something more, but at least you know where they are, we've covered them, and if anything else is discovered, we can put it up. So thanks for putting up with the, all the wind. Uh, we'll see what we can find for next time.